Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer Tales, Space, Tales, Space, Tales, Space, where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would just like to thank the following tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Fallen Angel, Buzz Kennington, Data Magnet, and Bob the Dragon. Thank you again, and now on to the story. Black Flag, written by the Mad Crafter. The freighter drifted, engines flickering every now and again. The life support had failed hours ago. And the crew inside the stellar carcass, clad in environmental suits, as they scrambled as best they could in a zero G to fix the failing core. Without sensors, the scanner suites, and the AI, there was no way that they'd see the predator sneaking up upon them to pounce. The 840 ton behemoth, laden with 600 tons of cargo, precious metals, medical supplies, ship components, a fat, juicy, piece of prey for the shadow lurking nearby. Even at full functionality, the massive and bloated whale would have had a hard time evading any kind of interception. A single point of fence cannon hung limply on the belly of the freighter, the gun rendered impotent without power from the ship's core. The predator was patient, lurking just out of the visual range of the bridge crew. Without power, they couldn't tell that they were being scanned over and over again. The Predator was mapping every single corridor, every bulkhead and storage room. It knew precisely where to strike, where to sink its fangs in for a quick and clean hill. Third quadrant, second bulkhead, just above the habitats. The Predator itched closer. The fiends within it itched with the promise of the kill. Somewhere inside, a command was issued. The engines flared to life. The crew aboard the crippled freighter only caught a glimpse of the beast as it lunged, a brief bark of warning over the comms before the entire bulk of the ship shook with the impact of the predator's attack. Less than a moment later, alarms blared. Hull breach. The predator's talons dug into the wood steel hull, metal crumpling and tearing from the grip. The boarding ramp slammed home, automated torches burning the hull before breaching charges blew the section inward. The predator disgorged its children, the tiny forms skittering across a boarding ramp and into the incapacitated hulk. Minor firefights erupted in corridors. Few on both sides died as the invaders quickly made their way towards the cargo compartments. One of the invaders punched in a code. The door sliding open to reveal... Uh, Nothing. An empty hold greeted the invaders. No cargo, but a single piece of paper on the floor. The lead pirate looked down at it. Surprise and a cartoon spaceman holding up the middle finger with a black flag on his chest. The invaders' com suddenly blared to life. A dozen voices screaming about something else out there. Another predator. A bigger predator. And... It was pouncing. Dozens of tiny new stars burst into existence, the drives of the boarding torpedoes lighting and sending their payload streaking towards the now immobilized target before two great plumes of blue-white light illuminated the massive alpha of the pack hunters rushing to bite into their chosen prey. The torpedoes rushed forward, AI dodging streaks of point defense fire, some burst in little plumes of fire as lucky rounds find purchase. But most close the distance, slowing rapidly before slamming into the other predator's hull, like teeth biting into the flesh as the alpha stalks closer for the kill. Inside, the torpedoes open. Armored figures dropped into compartments and hallways. Aboard the freighter, bulkheads burst open, and similarly armored figures suddenly emerge into the invaders' lines. Chaos reigned. Hours earlier, the freighter, all that glitters, hung in space a thousand kilometers from the Queen Anne Reborn. One vessel, a humble commerce transport, the other one of, if not the most, notorious pirate ships in the sector. 
but today the Queen Anne wasn't raiding. Her gun ports were closed and her boarding torpedoes were cold. Instead, the captain of the most notorious human pirate vessel was aboard all black letters, unarmed, alone, and with 90 million credit bounty on his head. You can't be serious, Gabriel, the captain of all that glitters, scoffed. As a heart attacked, Darwis replied, the gawky smirk on his face not phasing even a little. Gabriel's laughter was a barking hyena-like cackle as he doubled over, slapping his thighs. Davis simply stood there, his smirk unmoving. It took the freighter captain a moment to regain his breath. A telltale cough from space along overtaking him briefly. The freighter captain gestured at the haphazard and jerry-rigged state of the freighter's command deck. The Hulk is held together with duct tape, chewing gum, and the occasional sticky tissue that Emerson donated during night wash, Gabriel scoffed. Feck you, sir, Emerson said from his station as the crew laughed. Stop jerking off on your shift, and I might actually pay for you to get fricked at the next shore leave, so that you stop staining my damn screens, Gabriel said before turning back to Davis. This boat is a century and a half old. We're running drives two centuries old. Our drive core is only second generation, and our hull is untreated what steel. We wouldn't last thirty seconds in combat. Darwis swayed in his mag boots idly in the zero gravity command deck. The captain wasn't wrong. The ship might as well have been a wooden mast ship from the homeworld that had been shot into space for how durable and advanced it was. The Queen Anne Reborn would have had to be extra careful to not just rip it in half if they'd ever attempted to board her. Look, Darwis said, holding out his hands, I know. It seems nuts, but we can both profit here, and big time. He waved his hands over to his wrist computer, and a hologram appeared of an alien ship, complete with specs and a big, fat, wanted graphic. It's an Andrexi, he said. It's been scouring these lanes between here and Ursa Major for the last six revolutions. These lanes... I'm sure you all know at least a few vacant traders that aren't coming into port anymore because of this piece of crap. Darwis looked around. More than a few crew were nodding in agreement. A few spat at the sight of the hologram. Even Gabriel's eyes narrowed. It's Hydraxus ship, Darwis continued. It's vaster and more maneuverable. The Queen Anne couldn't even catch her in the void. But if we can get her to stop, Latched onto something, we can slink in and get under her guns. Our boarding torps could get past her point defense. We can pin her between you and us and board her, keep her from running. Gabriel looks around at his crew and he could see that they were all thinking what he was. That was a good plan. A damn good plan. We've only got a few small arms though, Gabriel countered. Hydraxus raiders will be better armed. Well, you're busy boarding them. We'll get shredded. Narwis nodded. Now. Hydraxus couldn't process what was happening. The assault had been completely turned as heavily armed and armored combatants that shouldn't have been there were suddenly amongst the boarding party, and more were spilling out into their own ship from more than a dozen boarding torpedoes piercing their hull. The Andraxes' point defense cannon swiveled and opened fire at the Queen Anne Rubon turned wide. All sections of the Queen Anne separated from her hull, as massive arms unfolded and held them out as shields to screen the ship from the oncoming fire. Do it now, Darvis shouted over the comms as the Queen Anne reborn turned hard and dove for their Draxi. Hours earlier. You would, the pirate said, if we didn't hide a few dozen crazy pirates in your ship at key choke points. You hold them just long enough to make them think that they're winning. Then we jump them. Boarding torpedoes will get us inside their ship. Meanwhile, our best guys pop out into the middle of their attack. And suddenly, the bugs are in a vice and we squeeze. The Queen Anne comes in, rams our boarding ramp down her throat. And you turn that big, fat, defensive cannon around. And drill into her heart and kill her. Now... 
the core of all that glitters brought to life. The lights in the dim corridors flaring to light to highlight the carnage unfolded within. All that glitters had an unusually large point of fence cannon for a ship its size, a deterrent for any would-be pirates. The massive GUA-13 cannon fired heavy, armor-piercing incendiary rounds that would give most corvettes or even some frigates pause. It was precisely why Darvis had chosen the ship to spring the trap, and at this range, she couldn't miss. The guns swiveled up just as the Queen of Anne Reborn slammed home, ramming the Endrexy and impaling it on the ship's reinforced boarding ramp. All that glitters fired. The five rotating barrels unleashing hell, chewing yard-wide holes through the attacker's hull and drilling deeper and deeper until it fell her heart. The Andraxi's drive core erupted in a gout of blue flame that bulged from her wound and out on the top of the craft. The ship's hull screaming and groaning as it died, both the Queen Anne reborn and all that glitters bucking and shuddering from her death throes. Inside, the combatants inside were tossed about like rag dolls, but the more seasoned human pirates and the Hydraxi raiders quickly recovered as the humans pressed their advantage. The Hydraxis had nowhere to go now. Hours earlier. And what are we getting out of this? Gabriel asked, crossing his arms and trying to look as though he wasn't already convinced. We're putting our asses in a vacuum the whole lot more than you are. Darwis' smirk widened to a full grin. We know that she has a full hold, Darwis said. She hit six other heavy freighters in the last two weeks, and she was sighted in this area in the last 72 hours, which means that she hasn't had a chance to empty her hold yet. We get her cargo. Then what the feck do we get? Gabriel scoffed. Davis tapped on the hologram. Wanted, and Draxi Hydrax's pirate vessel. Bounty, 65 billion credits. The Fraser crew went silent. You get to present the carcass and claim the bounty. Now, the pirate shoved the last of the manacled Hydraxes into the cargo hold and closed the door. Repair crews were already working on repairing all that glitters, and the rest were liberating the hundreds of tons of cargo from the Andrexi onto the Queen Anne Reborn, as well as reclaiming the generators that created the sensor ghosts used to lure the Andrexi to the freighter. More than a few of the freighter crew were drinking with the pirates in the corridors of all that glitters, cheering and celebrating the victory. On the command deck, Darwis and Gabriel sat, sharing a bottle of very rare and expensive bourbon from Darwis's personal stock. So, Gabriel asked, hissing as the potent liquid burned down his throat. Why? Darwis downed a shot without hesitation, his feet up on the console. Why what? he asked, pouring another round for himself and topping off Gabriel's glass. Why go after the Andraxi? He can't claim the bounty, and a cargo can't be enough to come close to it, he said sipping and hissing again. Seems like you did this at a loss, Captain. Bad business. Darwish chuckled, nodding a bit and sipping each drink. Principal, he said, making Gabriel raise an eyebrow. Tell me, Captain, your operators have rules, right? Helping each other out, codes of conduct, social contracts, that kind of crap. Gabriel nodded. Of course, keeps everyone flying, keeps the goods moving, Everyone gets home and everyone gets paid. Dawa sipped again, staring at the video feed of the Andraxi's corpse outside. Piracy isn't any different, whether it's human Solarian, Frengara. We're all agreed to certain rules, he said, sipping on his drink again. The Andraxi broke those rules. She was here as a revenge for our victory over some ally of the Hydraxes. I don't freaking know who, but who can keep track with every freaking conflict nowadays? He took a bigger drink. Early on, she killed the civilian transport because they didn't have any valuable cargo. Wanted to send a message that they meant business or some shit. Darwis took another long drink. Well, that's bad for the rest of us. 
Governments overlook us most days. But the second one of us starts popping silly ships. Gabriel nodded. Makes sense. Darvis nodded, then handed the date pad over to him. Program these codes into your ship nav beacon. No legit pirate will touch you. And if someone does, broadcast to a channel I bookmarked there. They'll wish they hadn't, Darwis said, slamming back the last of each drink. Oh, and the codes will only work for you. So no need ideas about sending the code to your buddies. Okay. Gabriel nodded, standing up and clasping Darwis by the wrist. Thank you. Best of luck, Darvis, he said. You too, Gabe. Keep the bottle. Hours later, Darwis stepped out of the shower in the captain's quarters, drying himself and wrapping a towel around himself. He poured a drink for himself and slammed it back before sitting down on the edge of his bed. He hunched over and took a shuddery breath before it overtook him. A sob escaping as he buried his face in his hands. The sobbing went on for several minutes before he reached into a drawer beside his bed, pulling a picture of another man and two kids. They were smiling, happy, and full of life. I got them, babe, he said, touching the man's face. I got them for you. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment, just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.